Mr. T here. Uh, we have a problem dealing with writing an exponential model uh, and we're given that these two points are part of an exponential function and we want to write the equation or model that would fit that data. And if you remember, <coughs> our exponential model template is y equals ab to the x power. And if you remember from when we did exponential growth and decay, A is our initial amount, and B will be a growth factor uh, or a decay factor. Now we have two points that are on this model, and again, this XY makes this equation true. So we know that the equation 7, the Y, equals AB to the first power, and we also know that 63 equals a b cubed again the y and the x because these points are on the curve they make these two equations true now in algebra when we have two equations and two unknowns we can solve them with different methods these are called systems of equations and the method that's appropriate here was a method called substitution we use substitution method back when we solved linear systems of equations we need to solve one of these equations for a letter, and I think the easiest here will be to solve the uh, first equation here for the letter A. So this is A times B, so to undo that multiplication we need to divide both sides of the equation by B. So we get the value for A is 7 over B. And the substitution method, we now replace the A in the second equation with that value creating a new equation that only has one letter so we now have 7 over B times the B cubed now we have an equation with one letter and we have algebraic methods for solving that I'm just gonna put this over 1 so we would be multiplying here so we get 63 equals 7 B cubed over B and we can use our exponent properties to simplify here. We're going to subtract the exponents. So we get 63 equals 7b squared. Now we have a quadratic equation. And when we have quadratic equations with only one letter squared, the quickest method to solve that is using square roots. So we need to get the uh, b squared by itself. So we're going to divide by 7. And we get 9 equals b squared. And now to undo the square, we square root both sides, and we have both a positive and a negative square root. And b could equal plus or minus 3. Now when we write our model, if you remember back for exponential growth models, <coughs> or exponential decay, the value of b is never negative. So for this particular problem, we're just going to use the plus 3 value for b. Now to write the model, we're going to leave the y and the x so that we could calculate our values for x and y for any point, but we need to fill in a and b, and we just found b. So now we can put b back into our equation that we had here solved for a and find the value of a. So a is going to be 7 over b, which was 3 or 7 thirds. We can't really simplify that, so we'll leave that as a, a fraction. So to finish the problem, we just have to write the model. So we now have y equals, and we're going to put in our a, 7 thirds, times our b was 3 to the x power. Again, since our b is bigger than 1, this would be an exponential growth model. And again, if we plotted that exponential growth, it would go through our two points. So this was our final answer. Mr. T with our second portion of our exponential modeling uh, tutorial. In this example, we have data collected about car values. You might remember when we studied exponential growth and decay that one of the examples we used was the value of cars over time that they depreciated. Uh, in this example, I've used a website called Edmunds.com to find car values for a Ford Fusion. I picked a particular model and got the new car price in 2012 and used car prices for a number of years and we want to model this and come up with a formula 
that would predict the value of the car over time. To understand what the data looks like, we might want to make a, st a scatter plot, and to do that, we can use the graphing calculator. So we're going to press the stat button and edit a list, and we're going to enter a data in the list. Our L1 column will be our age, so we need to calculate the ages. We will define the new car age as zero. This would then be two years old, three, four, and five. So we'll be using those for our L1 values. So let's enter those. So we have zero, two, three, four, and five. And our car prices, so the new price was $28,821. After two years, we had $17,643. And I'll continue down the list. And we might want to look a scatter plot at this to make sure that it does look like exponential decay. So to see a scatter plot, we need to turn on our stat plot for stat plot one. So I need to select one and turn that on and make sure that your scatter plot is selected. It is here. And we can press graph. Now we're not going to see anything here because our y values are quite large. So we need to adjust the window. We're not going to be looking at cars with negative ages. So let's look at car prices from say zero to, I don't know, 15 years maybe. And our y values, the lowest value it's going to be would be zero. And our highest value is slightly more than this, so we could put in, say, 30,000. And to get the tick marks on the y axis, we'll set the y scale to about 5,000. And now let's press graph. Now, if we look at this graph, uh, you might think it's a straight line, but we have a point up here, and it has that bend that we expect in exponential decay. So we want to fit a function to this. Fitting a function is called doing regression analysis. We could fit a linear function, a quadratic function, etc. But we want to fit a exponential function. To do that, our graphing calculator will do the heavy lifting for that. We press the stat function and we want to go to our calculation menu. And we have the different kinds of regression that we could do. We could try different ones to see which one fit the best, but I know that this one is a exponential model, so we're going to use exponential regression, item 10 here, or 0. I press enter, and it's going to give me the coefficients for the equation. So if we write that over here, our value, the y value, is a 27,477 dollars. And our B is about 0.828, if we round it, to the T years. So again, we could use this model by plugging in values of T to get the value at various ages. If you remember, since this value here, 0.828, is less than 1, this is exponential decay. And if we wanted to deter determine our depreciation rate, our percent decrease per year, remember we subtract that number, that B, from 1 and we get here 0.172 which would be 17.2 percent so our car value is decreasing in value by 17 percent each year if we wanted to look at this curve and see how it fits our data we could plot this function into our graphing calculator so in y1 I'll enter our equation 27477 times our b, 0.828, raised to the x power, and we could press graph, and we can see that it fits the data pretty well. The couple of the points are slightly off, and we can see our value. Now, the last thing we might want to look at here is maybe we want to sell the car when its value is $5,000, so we want to understand how long will it be before the GAR value is $5,000. Now, we could look at our graph and make an estimate, but we want to do uh, a calculation here and we can use solving an equation. So we want to find when the value will be 5,000. So we're going to plug that in for value. Now this is a exponential function so when we solve exponential functions we want to get the 
exponential portion by itself, so we're going to divide by 27,477. So let's do that on the calculator here. And we get approximately 0.1897. And that equals 0.828 to the t power. Now if you remember for exponential functions, we can take the log of both sides of the equation. And we can take the base 10 log or the natural log. We can use our exponent property to bring the t into front as a linear multiplier. And to since we have multiplication here, to get the t by itself, we need to divide both sides of the equation by this log. So now we can make this calculation in our calculator to get the value of t. So if we do that, we have now the log of 0.18197, close that parentheses, divide by log of 0.828, our growth, our decay factor. And we get approximately nine years. So in about nine years, our car's value will be $5,000. So I hope this helps. Thank you.